So are your January exams important? And why is it you spend maybe your whole Christmas holidays either thinking about the work you've got to be doing or actually doing the work? Well, it comes from a few years ago when A-level used to be a lot more modular and there used to be real exams in January as well as June. Now that's all changed and all the exams tend to be in the summer months and now they're also all at the end of the course, either the end of year 12 for the AS level or the end of year 13 for the full A-level. And I've got some data here because I'm a teacher, uh, especially a physics teacher, we quite like looking at numbers. Uh, and this is some real data from uh, my class I taught um, when I was a head of physics, or actually the whole year group when I was a head of physics. Uh, and what I've got basically here, I've got their students, I, I didn't put their real names in. Uh, I've got their official target grade and what they got in the January mock exams, their overall AS grade, uh, and then their mock exams that they did in year 13 and actually their, their overall uh, A2 grade. So that's their, their overall grade. Uh, but at the moment, this is just basically a load of numbers and it doesn't really give you a lot of information. So what I've got is a couple of tables to show this in a bit more detail. Now, first of all, I have some data for the year 12 students. Now, this is only the students who actually continued with the whole A-level and a lot of students who actually got E's and U's in the mock exams decided not to continue with physics. But basically what I've got here is the grade they got in their mock exam in January and the grade they got for their final AS level. And it's pretty straightforward. Basically, if uh, the students got A's in their mock exams, they tend to get A's in the AS level. So it's a pretty kind of clear kind of bit of correlation there. Not all the time though, one of the students did very well in the mock exams and messed it up in the summer and got an E. Uh, for, again, for those who got B's, a lot of them had it as a bit of a wake up call. If actually, if they can get a B in the mocks and there's no reason they couldn't get an A. Uh, and three of them kind of increased their grade to an A and a couple kind of got, got that. Uh, for those who got C's, well, one of them did very well and you know real wake up call and the other one uh, got a C there. People who tend to get D's and E's though, um, only very few of them kind of improve their grades. So most of them tend to get C's and D's uh, and so on. It tended to be though that whatever people got in their mock exam, they tended to go up by one grade. It's very rare for them to go down. Uh, and even the person who got a U in their, in their January exams got a D overall at AS level. So basically uh, it did seem to matter that those who tried really hard had been working well and really pulled, out, pulled it out the grades they got in their mock exams translated really nicely into their AS level grades. And I suppose it's not going to come up as much of a surprise that uh, the January mock exams for year 13, uh, where we went from A star down to U, the reason you can only get an A star for the A level course, not AS level. Um, these are the grades again, and you can see that there's this link here. Uh, the higher the grades that people got in the January exams, the higher or the better they got on at, for their full A level. Um, obviously not all the time there's come people who got maybe an A in the mock exams and went down to a B, uh, or maybe they got a B and they went down to a C. But overall, the people, uh, the students I taught, they did better. Uh, the better they did in their mock exams, the better they did at A level. And finally, this uh, last table here just shows what people got at AS level and how that translated to their full A level. Now, again, this was a really, really exceptional year group. Um, they were really well motivated. They tried lots of things. I mean, obviously my videos, that helped quite a lot, but also just, you know, having a lot of teachers, not just myself, who were really supportive and they really bought into their A levels. And it turned out that um, pretty much everybody who got an A star, and this is at a non-selective state school, uh, we got nine A stars um, and all of those students had got an A at AS level. Um, in terms of people who got Bs, that tended to be, uh, they sort of tended to kind of get that kind of grade. Um, even people who got uh, Cs and so on, they, some of them, a lot of them improved it to a B. Uh, and even the students who got an E kind of improved that. So basically, everybody improved their grade pretty much uh, by maybe one grade, perhaps, maybe two. Uh, and only a couple of people did well at AS and kind of dropped down at A level. So that does mean that your exams are important, okay? The better you do in your January exams, the higher chance you're gonna do very well at AS level, and the better you do at AS level, the higher you're gonna get on at A level. But there's no reason to stop you, maybe if you do mess up at AS level to kind of uh, not do well, you've just gotta kind of put the work in and then you can get the really kind of good grades at the end of it. So overall, are your January exams important? Yes, they are. It does mean that you kind of spend your Christmas time thinking about it, but from the students that I've taught, the better they prepare for the mock exams, the better they're gonna prepare for the real exams. So it is important. So with that in mind, have a good Christmas break, have a good holiday and work hard. Thank you very much.